So I tacked the upper pivot arms in place. Actually, no, I didn't tack them, excuse me. I stick welded them in place. Uh, and actually, now what I need to do is I need to take this thing out <clears throat> onto some level pavement. To this point, I've made all the arms and everything square to the bracketry. But what I want to do is I want to be able to make a stop on the bottom of the plow so it doesn't rotate forward. And I need to know where everything is level. I need to be able to do that where everything's level. So that means I need to pull all this out and bring it out to the front yard where the concrete is. And then I can figure out how I'm going to build whatever stop I'm going to build to keep this from rotating. I've already kicked up these little side runners. And, uh, but I don't want that blade grind it, that blade grind it into the ground when it's at the full stop. It does pivot pretty nice. Let me show you. Let me put you on the tripod here and let me pivot you. So at this time it should be pretty easy. All I need to do is just pivot it up enough to get this off the ground. And it does. Uh, the bracket for the arm hits my bracket. I'll show you where that is. But that pivots it up enough. That puts it about three inches up off the ground at least. Yeah. And that'll be controlled by the hydraulic ramp. Let me, Let me show you what we've got here. This is what's limiting me right now, and it's too late for me to do anything because I've already welded this in place. But this bracket here has the arm that controls the chute and the little hood. I don't even know if that's the camera, but anyhow, it bolts here and it bolts here. So when you tip it back, this bracket hits this. So I can't get the bucket any higher, but that's probably going to be all right. That should be all right. I don't know. We'll find out. I don't know how high you need to get it up off the ground. You really don't, I don't think. Just enough so I don't have to drag it around where I don't need to drag it around. Yeah, should be good. So, uh, yeah, let me clear everything out of here and take it out in the front. All righty. So with a little bit of manipulation, we got her out here in the front yard. Let's see if I can get a better angle this way. Yeah. I think that'll work. So, you go like this, it's level, left to right level, because this driveway, I know the driveway is level. Obviously not front to back, side to side this driveway is level. So what I'm gonna do, and I may have mentioned this earlier, but I'm gonna run a shorter belt, which is gonna bring the pulley up, and then mount the pillow block bearings here and here. I'm gonna run two pillow blocks ahead of the pulley to keep it stable. The pulley will be on the back side of the pillow box and then the stub out will be here. And that's when I could run this shaft drive shaft into. And the higher I make the drive shaft here, the less of an angle I've got on these universal joints. So I think that'll work. I think this may actually work. That's just wacky enough to work. And so now what I can do, see now that it's level, I've actually have more ability to raise and lower this thing. So that's kind of cool. I guess I don't know I've got quite a bit of uh, hydraulic ram so I should be able to get that all the way up uh, the shadows are playing hell on this but uh, what I'm what I did was I put a piece of 5 8 plywood underneath here and I figure by the time it kind of crunches down it gives us about a half inch between this blade and the ground which is good then it won't screw the uh, won't scrape up every last bit of rock and everything and now I can drop these little side legs down and level it off to the earth here, uh, which is cool because I just loosen these these nuts and bolts, raise this thing up. So I'm gonna have about a half inch. I don't know. I think that's okay. I don't know. I'm a snowplow guy. Another thing that's just kind of common sense. I think that'll work. I think. I think I can. I think I can. And then now I can mess with uh, whatever stoppage I'm gonna put here to keep this whole plow from rotating from rotating this way righty <clears throat> so we're at the end of day two I have about seven hours probably seven hours into this thing and at this point everything is uh, well, it's more than tacked in place I'll say it's welded in place but it's not fully welded in place I've actually got to unbolt this little ear and pull the blower off the bracket and be able to get in back behind a lot of these areas that are just tough right now with this thing in the way and complete welding it but I do have it is uh, it is it is I used a piece of uh, page I use a piece of three-quarter 
that's some thick wall pipe it's not gas pipe it's actually a um, out of my scrap pile it's actually a piece of uh, God, weight bar you know you'd put your slide your weights on the end here for lifting weights so it's a really heavy heavy walled three-quarter inch pipe and it's got some kind of composite material in the middle of it I'm not quite sure what it is uh, but it's some kind of composite material that really stiffens up that piece of steel so I did run it because I had to run it through the bender to give it a little kicky poo there to get underneath the axle which it does I should be able to get uh, quite a bit of suspension flex before that even becomes an issue but I'm not four wheeling on this thing when I'm snow blowing I'm on our road and uh, and uh, yeah yeah proper air in the tires and all that stuff and then I'll get the final adjustment on the blade height and then I can set these little side these little scra scrape pads on the side but uh, let me fire this thing up and I'll show you how she works I got the fuel turned off but I think it'll run Put you on the stand. And here's a thing of coolness. Get you a better shot there. Well, at least I think it's cool. This uh am I recording? Yeah, okay. This uh this pipe is not attached to here, it just kind of rests in this little this little bracket. Um, I do need to build a drive shaft or some sort of angle. I've probably got an L bracket that I could just weld onto the bottom of this lower bracket to keep this ram from this ramrod ram rod from hitting the ground uh, but see so if I do come up in the bank man or hit something and it kicks this whole thing to kick forward see it's free it, fro it floats free but I need to build some sort of limiter bracket tree to keep this sucker from coming off that's easy enough I think an L, uh, just uh, L bracket I got a nice heavy L bracket. I can weld up to the bottom of here and we'll hold that in place. I think that's cool. That's cool. And then, uh, so this weekend, I'll take it all take it all apart, finish weld everything, uh, get it painted up, and then I need to fabricate the figure out what kind of drive shaft I'm going to use uh, so I can order my pillow block bearings and do the drive shaft. But as of now, hell yeah. pretty cool that's pretty cool day two seven hours into the project I think we're doing okay uh, clean it up this weekend yeah clean up the welds finish welding everything clean it up maybe get a coat of paint on it sort out this kind of loopy deal here whatever retaining loop I put for this drive ram lift ram oh yeah that's awesome okay cool well there you go thanks for watching day two is done uh, yeah, that's good. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon.